There's a documentary about the Louis C.K. scandal called Sorry Not Sorry that isn't out for public consumption yet and might not ever be. This isn't a video about Louis C.K., it's a video about a video about Louis C.K. They say it's not what you know, it's who you know, and this is as much about that as it is about a disgraced comedian. What you're about to see was my attempt at getting any kind of response from these filmmakers, because, like always, I unearthed something that no one else had, and I thought it belonged somewhere in the context of their own work on the topic. They watched the video, they saw the messages, and in one month's time, there was no response given. So, now I'm showing it to all of you. If you're new here, hi, I'm Nick, I'm the best at finding things, and after this next bit is over, we're gonna have a little chat about why that's just not good enough. But for now, that's all you need to know. Enjoy. The Louis C.K. documentary is not out yet, and I have something significant to contribute to it. I'll cut to the chase. Louis C.K. dressed a bunch of actresses up in the same outfit, and then had them deliver the line, whip it out. Whip it out. Come on, whip it out. Just whip it out. Whip it out. Come on, let's go. Whip it out, Rich. I'll expand on that in a moment, but let me paint a picture for you. The documentary, Sorry Not Sorry, directed by Caroline Sue and Kara Monis, is about CK scandal and comeback. Both directors have spoken of having trouble getting many of the comedians and other figures associated with CK to agree to interview. Now, like Sue has stated about herself, before Me Too in 2017, I'd been a huge fan of Louis CK since I was a kid. After seeing him on stuff like Dr. Katz and Conan O'Brien in the 90s, and then in the 2000s, Louis C.K.'s Filthy Stupid Talent Show, Pootie Tang, the internet short films, do definitely had a huge impact on me growing up. His sitcoms, Louis and Lucky Louis, redefined the sitcom format, and there's a really creepy thing that he did on both of those shows with a bunch of the actresses he worked with on three unrelated episodes. He dressed them all up in the exact same red long coat and ponytail and had them deliver the line, whip it out. There's an episode in the first season of Louie where three different performers play the same role and they all do some combination of wearing the coat and the ponytail and delivering the line. Whip it out. Come on, whip it out. Just whip it out. That episode is about a high school crush of Louis who asked him to whip it out one time, and it's probably based on a true story because here's Oscar winner Melissa Leo wearing the outfit and later saying the line in an episode from season three. Whip it out. But this all started, as far as I can tell anyway, on Louis's first sitcom, Lucky Louis, where his frequent collaborator Pamela Adlon also wore the coat and read the line. Come on, let's go. Whip it out, Rich. I'm guessing that the episode about Louis' high school crush is based on an actual memory of Louis, and that that memory may have something to do with the whipping it out that ultimately destroyed his career. In the Showtime documentary, we need to talk about Cosby. Along with several other stories covering Cosby's crimes, they show some very incriminating archival footage to illustrate that drugging women was already part of Cosby's pathology. He talked about it in his stand-up. Spanish fly is groovy, yeah, boy. From then on, man, anytime you see a girl, what's your ass on Spanish fly, boy? Go to a party, see five girls standing alone. Boy, if I had a whole jug of Spanish fly, I'd light that corner up over there. <laughs> he talked about it on Larry King. On the head of a pin. pin. I said, drop and put it, it in, in the Coca Cola. Drink. Don't matter. It doesn't make it. And the girl would drink it. And, and she's yours. Hello, America. <laughs> and even heavily insinuated it in his wildly popular family sitcom, The Cosby Show. This is my barbecue sauce. <laughs> that people have and they get all huggy buggy. <laughs> it's one of those things that you have to be willfully ignorant to look away from once you see it. That's what I can add to the Louis C.K. story. Showtime also picked up the Louis C.K. documentary, then dropped it. It's now in the hands of a distribution company called Greenwich Entertainment. Now, I may be a bottom-feeding Midwestern YouTuber with less than 5,000 subscribers, but real talk, I beat This American Life and Radiolab in international competition when I was 24 years old. My research skills are bordering on Nardwar. Your research is second to none. Second to none. Nobody can hang with my stuff. Watch my stuff. We could make a documentary about John Lasseter, too, if you want. 
Anyway, I've read the festival reviews of Sorry Not Sorry, and no offense intended, I know I want to see it, but they have not exactly been glowing. The extra context that this aspect of Louis' story adds is the glow-up that this documentary needs. Society is still coming to terms with how truly disgusting many of its artists can be. You'll often hear it suggested that we separate the art from the artist, you know, appreciate the work on its own merits, completely divorced from the creepy, unhinged people who make it. But sometimes the creepy, unhinged parts of the artist are right there in the art. And as I've read, this documentary highlights that this was something Louis hid behind. He was the self-aware cretin, and his comedic admissions of guilt masked the stuff he was actually guilty of. I have a lot of beliefs, and I live by none of them. That's just the way I am. They're just my beliefs. I just like believing them. I like that part. They're my little believies. They make me feel good about who I am. But if they get in the way of a thing I want or I want to jack off or something, I fucking do that. Now I have video evidence of that, beyond just his jokes. He was happy to sneak this in there, but he would never openly admit to it. And I'm taking a guess that most of the actors who put on this costume for him had no real idea what they were doing. One of them was a minor. If he was really who he said he was, this open book of imperfections, he'd have revealed this about himself in the wake of the scandal and said, look at how fucked up I am. But he wouldn't dare. Somehow, he and I are the only two in possession of this information, and I'm the only one talking about it. And I've tried to get this out there multiple times for over 10 years at this point. I understand there are a lot of issues this raises, the film is already wrapped and they have to get permission to use the footage in question and probably gonna need to film some talking heads to react to it. Not to mention you gotta pay me now. And I'm genuinely sorry for everything but that last part. If I had known about this documentary earlier, I would have let you know about me earlier. But this is just the sequence of events we're dealing with now. Access has always been an issue for me my entire life. And we ain't got a time machine. But let's be real. It's worth it. I'm worth it. The information belongs in that documentary. If it can't be done, it can't be done. But I have a strong feeling that it can be done and that it should be done. Caroline Sue, Kara Monis, your documentarians, naturally curious people just like me. You live for this stuff. I'm holding the missing piece of the puzzle someone kicked under the couch. Are we just going to leave it there sitting on the table now? Right next to the big picture? Or are we going to put it where it belongs? Not to be a supervillain about this, but I'm sure you know these are desperate times and I am a rising tide right now. I refuse to stop, so I can't just make something like this for nothing. I'm giving you a month to respond, and if I don't hear back in that time, I'm posting this to all of my social media platforms. I'm sure you understand, it's nothing personal, but trust me, the last thing I want to do is make you look foolish. The plan is to make you look good. You have my utmost respect for telling this story, despite its challenges. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in what you were doing. But I'm 35, black, and broke, and I live in the middle of nowhere. I am not a part of the club, so I have to use my tools to break in, and I gotta start making some real money somehow, because I'm not cut out for the rat race, and I'm disgustingly cut out for this. You know, they say we gotta be twice as good to get half as much. Twice as good as them to get half what they have unfortunately i happen to be 12 times as good but unfortunately i think we all know this is not a meritocracy i feel like this should be an easy decision to make but as usual i am not the one making it even so i know the sag strike is over but there's still some time before productions are going to be up and running at 100 percent so let's make that time count let's show everybody the part of the louis ck narrative they haven't seen yet because one way or another that's what i intend to do with or without you that's what I intend to do. Thank you so very kindly for your time. I hope to hear from you soon, but if not, like, share, and subscribe. The person who wrote that is dangerous. And that's what I sent out. It was a long shot, but one that I had to take. The way things have been going lately, Greenwich is probably more likely to pull a Zaslav and disappear the film for a tax break than they are to put money in trying to fix it. And no one would even notice if they did. So why did I do it? Well, this is my left eye. And the first thing you probably notice seeing it close up 
is that there's a mole coming off of the iris and since they're both brown it just kind of looks like my iris has a little something extra to it and in a way it does i wear glasses i am visually impaired but even so for whatever reason i can see a little bit more than the average person and that's why i started this channel Obviously, not everything on here is about unearthing heretofore unmentioned cultural lore, but a great deal of it is. You know that shooting range scene in Men in Black where Will Smith catches on that the little girl is a shapeshifter and the big green monster is holding a tissue? That's me. I mean, just think about how much ink has been spilled over Louis C.K. A lot of people got paid good money to cover this story, not just these two filmmakers. How many of them found what I did? None. Just me. That thing I say at the end of my shorts, the only place on the internet you're going to find that, it's not a joke, it's a seal of quality. Maybe one of those things on its own would be a fluke, but I'm trying to illustrate that this is something that I can reliably and consistently do. And while there are people trying to make a living just repeating stuff other people find on Reddit or Twitter, or people making a living making shit up, I can find stuff nobody finds, and in some cases, things that people were never meant to see. I just want an opportunity to do that at the highest level, because there's a lot of stuff I want to explain, and I know I can help, but I need longer than a minute to say anything of real substance, and I don't have enough support to do that yet. But now it's like, I mean, I said I wanted to do this at the highest level, right? What does that even mean anymore? A lot of the places that I pitched this story to in the past, like, Vox, Vice, BuzzFeed News, the AV Club, they're all dead or dying now. There are fewer spots out there, a ton of them are already reserved for people from elite backgrounds, and I wasn't hearing back when there were more opportunities. Currently, for me, the highest level in mainstream media is Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. They have the best research team, they find the craziest stuff, they win all the awards, they got all the money, they blow money like it's going out of style. They're offering money to Clarence Thomas. I mean, for example, time of recording, they just did an episode about the Supreme Court that mentions Harlan Crow, the billionaire who bought Clarence Thomas and his weird Nazi room. I made a video that mentioned Harlan Crow too, but what neither of us mentioned is that he's got a ton of dictator stuff in general. There's an entire garden of evil, as it's been coined, to fallen despotic leaders on his property, including a statue of Roman dictator Nikolai Ceausescu that reportedly arrived caked in human feces. But it's still definitely a collection and not hoarding because he has more money than you. And that's all I wanna do, add more information, add more context where needed because that is a ability that I have been uniquely given and I think it goes well beyond the average person's but you can't just apply to last week tonight with John Oliver. You got to get experience that I can't get from knowing people that I can't meet. And all this shit is starting to make me feel like Wiley Coyote. You know, like I'm trying to get my foot in the door, but I'm pretty sure that the door is painted on a wall. Since the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action, I've seen a lot of talk from conservatives about a return to meritocracy. But that shit always comes with the tacit assumption that white people are more qualified. Some of these mother aren't even being tacit about it they're just straight up saying the quiet part loud like bootstraps before the concept of meritocracy started out as satire but neoliberalism has transformed them both into goals so whatever i'll play the game i have the merit you speak of i can't even get a job interview you know that shooting range scene in men in black where will smith catches on that the little girl is a shapeshifter and the big green monster is holding a tissue that's me but a couple of years ago, I wrote an article for a content farm that was recommended for an academic journal. So I told middle management and they told the higher ups and the higher ups just kind of sat on it and ignored it until the deadline passed. And I had to start making videos for myself because the corporate structure was completely failing me. I don't have imposter syndrome. Like I said, I'm the best. I'm willing to prove it. I don't want to fake it till I make it. I have it. It's real. I just need a place for it to go. In the 1991 Skate America competition, Tanya Harding was the only woman figure skater hitting triple axles. It didn't matter if officials didn't like her clothes or her music or thought she was trashy. She could do that shit and nobody else could. That's me. 
Recently, I learned that unemployment rates for black and brown college grads are similar to those of white high school dropouts, and that 85% of jobs are gotten through people you already know. I wish I'd known this sooner than a few weeks ago, but I'm not sure it'd make a huge difference. You can forge connections yourself, but the more privilege you have, the better connections you have. The other option is to stay independent, and I think that's probably the way to go. The only success I've seen recently is from doing this on my own. I appreciate the monetary support that I've gotten on Patreon so very, very deeply. I really want all my patrons to feel like they've made good on their investment. As far as I can tell, the highest level for independent creators right now is Nebula, but you can't just apply there either. I'm guessing you have to have a pretty sizable following. So keep up the shares and the likes and the comments and all that good shit. I'm kind of fucked whether my boss is a person or an algorithm because neither one really knows what to do with me. It's going to have to be real people helping each other out. So I want to thank FD Signifier again for sharing my vids. He's responsible for the bulk of my followers on YouTube. Uh, I want to thank Nick G for fixing my heat. You're a lifesaver and a lifelong friend and I love you. I want to thank Molly for helping me find work. I want to thank Low CRPG for the wonderful fan art. These are real people. These are my connections, and I'm so insanely proud to have them. I didn't give the directors the sob story because we all struggle, and I thought my findings should speak for themselves, but the fact is I left an abusive marriage. I had to move back home. I lost my remote job that I had for a decade, and then one of my closest friends passed away unexpectedly, all in under two years. I realized that... I've been fortunate in countless ways, but that is a lot of trauma for one person to go through in a short period of time, and I very much want to see another side of this where I can worry less about money and have my own place and date women again. And I don't think it's unreasonable for me to want to get there doing what I'm best at. There's plenty of stuff I'm good at that I'd love to do professionally. This is different from that. There are certain cases where if you want to have as much information as possible on a topic, my contributions are absolutely necessary. I'm not saying this all because I think I'm so fucking great. I don't. I'm just saying this because I have a gift and I want to share it. And if I can contribute things of value that no one else can, let's do something about that while I'm still alive and my brain still works. I just had my first job interview in a while at a cell phone store. And it went well and I hope I get it because I need the money. But I don't just want a job, I want a career. So thanks again to my patrons, they get me closer to my goals every day. If you want to support too, think about joining the Patreon. I post all kinds of stuff there. If you're broke like me but you still want to help, just leave a like or comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff helps. Thank you too. Well, until next time, I've been Nicholas Nameless. I want you to bring me the cash. I said I want you to bring me the cash. I want you to bring me the cash. One time, two times for that ass. I want you to bring me the cash.